hello, hello! Welcome back to Jan Hicks Creates. I am Jan and I am thrilled to have you here back for my weekly floss tube. Don't think I have a whole lot to share today, but you never know. We'll see how I ramble on. I don't usually ramble. I don't think I ramble. Maybe you think I ramble and I'm rambling. <laughs> All right, let's see. It is Tuesday, December 3rd. December 3rd. How did we get here? I'm not really sure. I, I woke up and it was December. <laughs> Tuesday, let's see. I'm back in the loft as you can see. We're back to the time of year when it's cool enough that I can actually be up here for longer periods of time. It is 74 degrees and cloudy going up to 77. Perfect weather. We're back in the perfect Hawaii weather again. So, what's happening this week? Um, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Um, no more information on the move. Um, don't expect to really have much to tell you until probably January. Um, paperwork, the release paperwork from this office, this side needs to be done. And then Mike has some processing for the PCS that he has to go through and you know, it's like meetings and he might have to have his polygraph redone. Um, you know, that kind of thing has to happen. So I don't expect that to be done until the end of December. Now I will say, very interesting. So this, um, this job that he's going to in San Antonio, it's actually a, a new mission is being stood up there and it's going to be a team of 10 people the job that Mike applied for was a analyst reporter job and the um, selecting official called him back. It must have been Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. I don't think it was Friday, um, but maybe it was Friday. I don't remember. Anyway, said he was looking over his resume and um, saw the experience that he does have in management and so got in touch with him and asked him if he would be interested in taking the team lead position instead. So Mike will be the, the team leader of a team of 10, I guess nine, um, without him. So I'm thinking, I mean, they're anxious to get everybody on board to begin with, but I think they'll really be anxious to get him out there to, there's three people already on site. Um, so I think they'll be anxious to get him out there so that he can, get the thing stood up properly and as the new other new people come in you know kind of get everybody sorted so and not to mention learning the job himself um this is certainly similar similar to what he's done before but a little bit of a different um take on things i guess so i expect that the selecting official will be pushing to get all of his stuff done. I expect that in January we'll, we will be traveling to San Antonio for a house hunting trip. Like I mentioned in my video on Friday, we have decided to buy instead of rent. The, in many cases, the house we can get that it has been totally renovated, not necessarily big. We don't want a big house, of course. Um, but two bedroom, th three bedroom, we'll be paying less than we would for an equivalent, fairly new, fairly nice apartment like the kind we had back in Maryland. Um, still a lot cheaper than here, a lot cheaper than Maryland apartment wise, but the housing, the housing prices are, are just excellent in the San Antonio area. So it'd be kind of silly to be throwing our money away for rent. Um, now the one big question is whether we want to make San Antonio our home. And the idea is that, you know, after Mike retires, whenever that might be, he's eligible in three years, whether he retires or not then is, is still an unknown. Um, but once he retires, we're going out on the road full time. You guys know that on in our RV and overlanding in our Jeep. But eventually, we'll want to have a place to come home to. And of course it would be nice to have a place to come home to should we need a home base. 
So the question is, do we want San Antonio to be that place? I've heard, certainly heard good things from everybody, um, but I never imagined myself living in Texas. <laughs> so <laughs> I need to see for myself what it's like. Um, so yeah, that'll be part of the house hunting trip, but also we'll be living in the RV when we move there. And we are basically gonna take as much time as we need to find the perfect home and to really get a feel for whether that's what we wanna do. So our shipment will get, our household goods will get shipped over and just put in storage. And when we're ready to have them delivered, the moving company, the government still pays for all of that, does all that, they move the stuff in, they unpack everything. Um, so it doesn't matter how long we take, you know, they'll still be doing that. Um, so yeah, the, um, the big criteria are pretty much a completely renovated house. We don't wanna be doing any housework or any renovations. Um, we do want an older home though. We like the character of older homes better. We like unusual features. We like um, features that kind of speak to the area that we're living in but we wanna spend our time out roaming the countryside on the weekends, not renovating a house. Um, we also wanna have a house that has room to park the RV if possible, and the older homes seem to be more conducive to that than newer homes. And also, you aren't as likely to have HOA restrictions in older communities that might prohibit parking your RV there as you would in a newer community. And of course it has to have a craft room. <laughs> so those are our criteria. So um, yeah, January, I expect we'll be going out for a house hunting trip at some point and then moving at some point in February. Now, Mike keeps saying it could take longer. It certainly took longer to get out here, but there were a whole lot of things that went wrong when moving out here. And we also don't have the person who wants to get the mission going, pushing on the other end. So. I said I didn't know much more about that, and there I rambled on for however many minutes. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, I am going to have a link below. I watched um, Beth Twist Heartstring Samplery's YouTube video the other day, and she does have a freebie for Thanksgiving 2019 out that's really cute. Um, hold on a second, let me show it to you. She had this done on her YouTube video, on her floss tube, but there it is. That is a freebie. So I will be putting the link for this down below. Um, let me get back to my notes. Flossmas. Anybody else celebrating Flossmas? I thought about it for a minute or two, but decided, you know, I'm... I'm have some Christmas stitching I'm going to be doing, but I don't think I want to get into the video a day at this point. You know, I have my basics of cross stitch on Monday, Tuesday is this one, Friday is my stitch with me. I'm comfortable with that. I haven't touched the computer in like all weekend. Now, granted, it was kind of a holiday weekend, but I, you know, I have other patterns I want to get out. So, um, I think I'm just not going to, I'll stick with what I'm doing and let other people enjoy Flossmas and watch and enjoy. And I hope you do too. I know Caroline is doing it. Caroline from Off the Grid Needle Arts, um, kind of in conjunction with Michelle Garrett, Michelle Bendy. Uh, they are doing a, this kind of as a charity thing this month for Muscular Dystrophy of Canada. And so Michelle is helping out with that with auction items on Instagram. So I encourage you guys to check them out. And um, I'm not sure who all else, else is doing flock, floss mess, but it's always fun to see what everybody's doing. Victorian Motto Sampler Shop. If you are not following her blog yet, Nancy, run over and do it. Again, I will link that below. Um, every year at Christmas, for the first 12 days of Christmas, she does a daily giveaway. You go, she will we'll send an email with her blog post. You go to the blog post and comment and you get entered in to win. She will be doing all the drawings on December 15th. 
And it's not like you have to comment on the day the blog post comes out. I think last year I waited until the 12th and commented on all of them. I'm going to do better this year because it was kind of a hassle to have to go to each blog post separately and do that. So, um, but anyways, I will link that blog below. So, so far two, three, three, um, are up. So yeah, Victorian Motto Sampler Shop. If you are one of the like two people in the cross stitch world who are not following her blog yet, do it. Wonderful, wonderful floss and fabrics. Um, okay. I think that's all the news. I have one almost fully finished, one section finish, and then the usual stuff. So almost fully finished. I went a little crazy on Thanksgiving and decided I needed to do this. Now this is a freebie chart that I picked up at um, StitchCon, a keepsakes during StitchCon last year. Or maybe Joanne found it and gave it to me. I don't remember, one of those. Joanne was my roommate last year. So I decided I wanted it small so I grabbed some 32 count fabric and stitched this on Thanksgiving. So over one on 32, the words are Black Coffee by um, Classic Color Works. The green stems are Mud Pie, uh, Mud Pie from the Tis the Season set from Victorian Motto. And the orange is one of, is the Halloween orange from Silk Floss from Mrs. Satis. So I say almost fully finished because I still want to do something down here to kind of cover up this join. Maybe with a bow when I have some wooden leaves, but I am not good at bows at all. So I messed around with it a little bit this morning and just went, it just looks, it looks like an amateur did it. <laughs> so I will continue to play and maybe next week, I'll, I need to get down to Ben Franklin and see if they, still have any fall themed stuff out. I know we're after Thanksgiving, so everything except Christmas is gone. All right, the other, um, what I'm calling a finish, even though it's just a section finish, is part one from By the Bay. So this is the tis this, or, um, time for seasons stitch along. I got this done over the weekend as I expected I would. I love my color choices. Most of them are Victorian Motto or Geno Arts Weeks. Um, the smaller ones, the smaller pieces, the reds, the yellow, the blues of this house, the yellows in the um, sun, the white, those are DMC, the clouds, those are all the called for DMC. But pretty much everything else is um, just stuff that I thought I pulled out my DMC color chart and found some variegated floss that I thought would work. And I love my sky. Okay. I think it's, I think it's funny, ironic, serendipitous, just how things work out for me, I guess. So if, for those of you that watched my journey on Harbor Haven, which, you know, I absolutely adored what made that piece was the fabric, the crossed wing collection fabric that I chose that had the model blue and white for the sky. I thought I would be a little bit, maybe not as happy with this because I did love that fabric so much and it was so perfect. I love this one too. So this is Kansas Sky by Victorian Motto. It is not something you can still get. You know, this is one of her club colors and um, those are all limited editions. It's not like she keeps doing redoing anything that's in the club. But this gives you an idea of how gorgeous and subtle her variegation is in her flosses. I cannot recommend her highly enough. And to, on top of that, you get 20 yards of her, I don't think I have a skein laying around. Um, it's in my old one. For those of you that might not be familiar, again, all two of you, oops, 
Where is that Kansas sky? There it is. You get 20 yards in one of her skeins. So it is also a fantastic deal. So, highly, highly, highly recommend Victorian Motto. Okay, um, what's next? So after I finished, all right, hold on, rewind. Um, for those of you that watched my reorganizing my stash video, you know that I pulled out or I reacquainted myself with my ones from Sue Lentz, Sue Lentz Needlework, Sue Lentz Design, something like that. She is no longer designing, and I have no idea if you can find her designs anywhere. But this is one called Stained Glass Star. It is from 1989, and I decided to go ahead and pull it out and start working on it. I'm only working on it like an hour a day, and actually yesterday I didn't work on it at all. I hope to get to it today. So it is, um, I'm not very good today at pulling all this stuff out. But anyways, there's a star with all these outlines to give it the feel of stained glass. So you do these outlines and then you fill it in with the specialty stitches. I'm gonna do a bunch more of the outline and then I probably won't do all of the outline I'll take breaks from doing the outline to fill in the gorgeous colors and the gorgeous stitches in these sections. Now, we, you know, we already know that the floss tube community is brilliant and lovely and kind and generous and all of those wonderful things, but you guys are also sharp-eyed. I wanna call out Becca from My Stitchy Home. She does have a floss tube channel. I haven't watched it in a while, Becca. I have to apologize for that. But she is brilliant and she has super sharp eyes. So I'm sure I looked at the instructions. You know, I haven't worked on this in 20 some years. I'm sure I looked at the instructions and I was sure it said one strand of the balje. Becca wrote a comment and said, are you sure it's only supposed to be one strand? This over here, the older stuff looks thicker. And I was like, yeah, I looked at the instructions. It's, it's one strand. Maybe it's just a trick of the light. Well, when I was pulling this out today to get ready for the video, I looked at it and I went, you know something? It does look thicker over there. I better look at those instructions again. And sure enough, it's two strands. Well, bummer. <laughs> That's so annoying. It's not like I've done a whole lot, but I have done a chunk. But I think what I'm going to do is um, just get a second, get another strand and just go over like the top cross of the new stuff that I've done. I'm not gonna take this out. I'm just gonna go over the top cross with an, another strand. Um, and I think that will, that will be close enough. It better because that's what I'm doing. So um, my other one hour a day project, my shawl is coming along nicely. I am up to six, no, I think I'm at 589, maybe 591 stitches now. Um, I've been up to 600 some, and then there was a decrease row, and now we're climbing again. I am on the border. So the rest of the shawl is going to be in this color. And it's just gonna be garter stitch rows with I think an increased row in between. Um, I think I'll be up to 600 and some again. And then the I-cord bind off. And I'm gonna do the I-cord bind off in the dark color. It is supposed to be a two color. Well, you have an option for a two color I-cord bind off. And I don't wanna do that. Um, mostly because I want the solid dark at the end. I think it it creates a better balance and kind of encompasses and balances out everything else that's going on here. Because we're gonna have a chunk of this white here, so I wanna have the dark ending it. But I, this is probably one of the best 
my favorite of his projects. I've done a number, like I said, I think I've done his um, mystery knits all except maybe two, and he's been doing them for 10 years. And this is my favorite so far. It's been just so much fun. Now, those rows, it takes me about a half hour. I don't know, I'm a fast knitter. <laughs> it takes me about 20 minutes to a half hour, depending on whether it's knitting or purling or any specialty stitches. Um, to get across a row. So it's not going to be fast. I'm still going to be working on this because I think there's, I have, I think I have 10 more rows in that bit. There's a, another increase row and then probably 10 or 12 more rows after that before the I-cord bind off. So it's going to be a while yet. All right, so time for season stitch along is put aside now. We won't get the next section until December 15th. So I'm going back to Shades of Gold and um, my fractal bookmark. Now Shades of Gold, um, this is my priority. I really want to get this done before I pick up Farewell to Anger. Um, I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm probably at about 52, 53% now. Yes, I'd like to get Shades of Gold done too, but this, this full coverage, before I start another full coverage, I will feel so accomplished if I get this done. Now, I have changed the way I'm stitching it a little bit. I'm still on the diagonal, basically. It's a very wobbly diagonal, because anytime there's any stitches of a color that I'm using that are right along the diagonal, I just go ahead and do them, especially if there's no other ones in the general area. Um, I get those done. But I, the what I've changed is somebody posted on the um, Love of Diagonal Stitching group about how she does it. And what she does is works all of one color within the 10 square diagonal and then parks, if, if she can, parks that thread in the next diagonal, not the next diagonal over, but the next chunk of 10 down that diagonal. So she's not, here, I made a diagram. This is from one of my charts. This is from the um, Cabin in the Woods chart. So here's our 10 by 10 square, right? When you're working on the diagonal, you're cutting that square in half and working this diagonal here. So you see the orange line here and you see the orange line here. You're working down the diagonal. Now traditionally, and um, you know, as much as one can say there's any tradition in any cross stitch because we all have our own ways of doing it, but traditionally you would work across one row. So like I would work all of, I can't even tell what that is. I don't have glasses on. Whoa, there we go. I can't tell what these are without my glasses on. Whatever that symbol is there. So you would, I would do those ones on the first row and then I'd park the thread down here and I'd do the equal sign on the first row and park it in the next instance here and then do whatever that is and part, you know, in the first row and park it in the next instance I saw it. And if there wasn't um, another one in that diagonal, then you end the thread. So what this method does is I would take that symbol and I would work all of them in this 10 square diagonal and then park them down, park it down here. And then I'd come back up here and get another one and work all of that color in that 10 square diagonal. And it is going so much faster. Now, the downside is that you do end up with some single stitches with other stitches already formed all around it. And so that has a tendency to mess up those other stitches a, a, a bit when you're coming up and going down and coming up and going down. You're pushing up those threads in the surrounding stitches. So it doesn't leave your stitches as pristine as if you were doing one, you know, across the row and across the row, just single stitches. I decided I'm okay with that, that at this point, the speed is more important to me 
and I'm trying to be as careful as I can when I'm coming up that I'm not snagging another thread, but it happens. But I don't think, unless you get really close and get really picky, you're not gonna see that. All you're going to see is this absolutely amazing design with all these wonderful colors. And I tell you what, look at this center in here, the way this is swirling around, just the, oh, it is scrumptious. I haven't checked the December pattern yet because I need another full coverage. I need to check the December pattern though. For those of you that I know somebody on Instagram said they'd like to start this, the bookmark itself is only available for the month that they have it. Um, this was March. So it was only available in March. It's not like you can go back and find earlier, um, earlier months patterns. However, all of the fractals are taken from full size pieces. So you could always get the full size piece or I know they repeat the fractals. So you could just wait until it comes up again. Over one, one, one thread over one on 28 count Lugana. Love. All right, I think that's all the current. So my plan is I'm gonna work on this for a few days. Definitely I'll be getting down to the end of the um, diagonal before I switch. And then I may not even switch. If I do switch, I'll switch to shades of gold. But like I said, if I'm still, if the confetti is starting to get to me, then I'll switch to shades of gold for a little bit. But this is really gonna be my focus piece for December. Of course, having said that, I have my hour a day on the stained glass star. Once I get the pattern for December 15th, once I get the next um, time for seasons part, I will be starting that because I don't want to fall down behind on that. But also, <laughs> guys, you know how much I have fallen in love with Teresa Kogut's angels. And I finally took the time to look on her Etsy shop and indeed, she does have them as cross-stitch charts. Not all of them. I think there's only three or four. I'm definitely going to do two, maybe three, to have them kind of hanging together. It is a quasi full coverage. The only part that isn't covered is these corners up here and this little bit of fabric on each side of her head. But isn't that gorgeous? So this one is called Angelic Vision. So I have been, I pulled out several different um, of my fabrics, 32 count, 36 count, different ones. This happens to be coffee mix, 38 count Zweigart. It's called Delarna, I believe, without my glasses. I put up five different choices on Instagram and in my Facebook group. And you know, as many people as I asked, there was that many different opinions. <laughs> this is the one I've chosen. Coffee mix, I think is the best. Now, several of you said, oh, you need to do a floss toss. Well, you know me, I'm weird. This is my floss toss. So that's most of the flosses. There's a few more in a second one. Really, they looked good on all of the um, fabrics that I chose. So I just chose the one that was calling to me. And you know, um, the interesting thing about this is, actually I, I like eliminated a couple and then the last three were all the XG Designs ones and um, I just picked one basically. <laughs> you know, usually when I am picking fabric for a design, there's always one that just yells louder than all the others. There wasn't on this one, but I do think it'll be gorgeous on this coffee mix. And 38 count, so I will be using one thread um, over two on this. So I am going to get started on this today. So this will be another maybe hour a day piece, I don't know. 
But then, oh, actually I meant to get the pattern out for this. Hold on. All right, finally found it. Baby Blue Sparkler by Shannon Christie and Northern Expressions Needle Art. So you remember I got the pattern and I got the, um, the bead pack. And I said, this would make a nice like little Christmas ornament thing to do at Christmas, but I needed fabric. Well, as I was going through everything yesterday, looking for fabric that I wanted to pull for the basics of cross stitch fabric one I did yesterday, the video, I pulled this out. So this is one that I had had for um, hands-on designs moments in chalk. And that's the one where it has this, um, the center piece and then all the different seasons, like flowers all around it. I decided I didn't want to do the flowers, that I was just going to do the center piece. So I don't need a piece this big. And this is another XG design. This is her chalkboard, I believe. It is a, um, it is, I think I asked for a special cut on this. Um, but I'm going to cut off a piece of this. And this is a 30, actually, oh, you know something? I bet you I can't use this. Needs to be a 28 count fabric because otherwise the beads won't work. Bummer, all right, so I won't be starting this. I will go to one, two, three stitch or kitten stitcher or something like that to get some dark fabric. Oh, that's rather disappointing. <laughs> anyway, I think the only thing I have left is haul. So, Go back here, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Yeah, all right. So one of my pieces of haul was the um, angel chart from Teresa Kogut. While I was on her site, I also got this. Now, this is also a cross stitch pattern. I decided I'd get the punch needle pattern because it'll go faster. I know, I have that other punch needle piece I have to complete. I hear you, but I've loved him as soon as I saw him and so decided to get it in punch needle. So that is also from her Etsy shop, which I will link below. Then this was back ordered from 123 Stitch. This is, was included in my order that I showed you last week, but it was back ordered. This is new from Sue Hillis. Home for the Harvest. She has the um, Home for the Holidays one that she released last year. And now she has Home for the Harvest. Super, super cute. I love all of these and the little camper. I mean, really. See, I don't like Halloween, but I love the fall pieces. And then I got my first package from the Silver Needle Circle of Friends Club. Now, as far, I, I believe this is sold out, but I would say because it is sold out, but because I am so impressed with this, um, make sure whenever they're, they have any offerings next year, sign up. All right, so the pattern is from La Dida. It is Frac Fractor Frida. Isn't he handsome? And the kit includes this is Havana um, by Weeks Dye Works. I'm not sure what count. I'm sure it says somewhere. Needle, thread, all the things. Sorry about the glare. This fabric is backing fabric. If you wanted to make this into a pillow, I think there is Rick Rack in here as well for finishing. You know, the Rick Rack that she used, the big and the small. But there's more Jelly Bellies which I can eat because they are gluten-free. Look at this adorable thing. A little light bulb that you can unscrew and put your orts in. Now I'm not a big one for saving my orts, so it may or may not get used for that, 
but I think it's a brilliant little thing. And there's more. This adorable little tub to put your pillows in. How cute is that? I don't expect we'll get all of these goodies in every box, but this is off to an amazing start. Now, of course, I won't be doing this anytime soon, but he is cute and I will get to him at some point. Um, and that makes me look forward even more to the retreat at the Silver Needle next September. They obviously know how to treat their people. I also found out about a retreat in San Antonio in May. So Leslie um, from Under the Sea Fabrics, apparently she recently moved to San Antonio. I met her at StitchCon last year, but of course I had no connection to San Antonio at that point. But um, Lauren, Lauren Lonnie, I believe, mentioned her retreat and her Facebook group. She's the one that had the Mirabilia retreat and she's renamed it um, Stitching Sirens, I forget. I'll, I'll link it below, but it's the retreat Facebook group. So I went ahead and joined that. She's gonna be putting out the details for the retreat, I think in a few weeks, the retreat is happening in May, but it's like right in San Antonio. <laughs> I am just so over the top, not only about moving back to the mainland, but I have access to all of these things again. I'm just, I'm so excited, so excited. All right, guys, um, I think that is all. It's probably enough. I will see you again on Friday for a stitch with me. Who knows what I'll be stitching on? It's always a surprise to me. <laughs> it is to you too. <laughs> I love you guys. Oh, wait, I forgot something. Duh. The angels. Excuse uh, it's the, They're buried. My angels are buried. Does she look familiar? Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? So this says, and talk about timely, live in gratitude, for gratitude is the ultimate state of receivership. I believe that's saying that if you live in gratitude, everything becomes a gift. Everything is something you're grateful for. You're always receiving blessings. Now, I just noticed as I pulled the box towards me, sneak peek for next week's. Look at the background. I don't have any fabric like that. It's probably the strong red that makes that turquoise work on that one. It's probably too strong for this, huh? Yeah, I'm just going to stick with what I picked. Anyway, guys, live in gratitude. I am thankful for you. I'm thankful you thankful that you visit with me every day. I'm thankful that you comment and that we have a relationship that shares this wonderful love of needlework. You guys have a fantastic week, and I will see you again Friday. Love you guys. Bye-bye.